Okay people, this is himself, and in this video, I'm going to show you the best setups for Nina's elbow smash throw. I'll show you how to stop your opponent's ducking and sidestepping, and if you stick around to the end, you'll see an 85 damage combo related to the subject. On top of that, I'll also show you two less known inputs that you might find useful. So for those of you unfamiliar with the move, Elbow Strike is a 12 frame throw. It does 43 damage and is a 1 plus 2 break. On hit, it sets up OK and in the near future I'll be doing a video covering that. So if you want to see it, make sure you hit that subscribe button. But back to our main topic, setups. I'm going to start off with the ones which are mediocre and work my way up to a best. First off we have Jab 1 on block. This is the most basic setup and almost every character has something like this. On block, 1 is plus 1, so it means our throw comes out in 11 frames. To stop the opponent ducking, we can use DF4. This comes out in 12 frames, so the chances of being interrupted are minimal. But DF4 will whiff against sidesteppers, so the cover for that is D4. This will trap people whether they go left or right, and it high crisps from the 4th frame, so you'll go under anyone trying to interrupt with a 10 or 11 frame move. The only issue is that it's low, so you'll get blocked by anyone ducking the throw. The other problem is that both DF4 and D4 can whiff against backdashes, so you really need to be careful with this one. The next setup is 1 on hit. In this situation, you're at plus 8, which is great because the throw becomes uninterruptible. It also means that we can use Ivory Cutter to cover other options. I'll go into more detail on this move later, but basically it's a 15 frame mid and it'll track sidesteppers. And if they try to backdash, they'll be able to block it, but you're safe at minus 5. Next setup is 2 on block. Just like 1 on block, this is plus 1, but people are less clued up to that, so they're less likely to suspect the throw is coming. What also makes 2 good is the follow up, Spider Knee 3. This is a mid, so it'll catch duckers and it'll track sidesteppers, and once it lands, you can go into multi throws. I've actually done a video covering easy inputs for those, so if you want to watch it, there's a card in the top right corner and a link in the description. The only problem with this move is that on block and against backdashes, you end up at minus 13, so you can be punished. The other possibility we have here is 2 on hit. This is very similar to 1, except that you're at plus 7 rather than plus 8, but the throw is still uninterruptible and Ivory Cutter is still the cover. Before I go into the better setups, I want to show you two inputs for the throw that are less known. The first is from Crouch Dash. What you want to do here is hit the first DF as she's recovering from the crouch dash, and then the second as soon as she's active again. Now an opponent might see this coming because there's a slight pause between the crouch dash and the throw, but we have options to cover that. Firstly, we can use while standing one. This is a 13 frame mid that's only minus six on block, and to get it out, what we do is core circle forward and then up forward plus one. However, a better option is core circle forward plus two. Again, this is a safe mid, but what makes it better is that it covers the delay between the crouch dash and the throw, and you can enhance this by doing core circle forward, neutral, and then F plus 2. One final option, if you want to gamble, is doing while standing plus 2. You can do this by core circle forward, neutral, and then back plus 2. This catches duckers like the other options, but it will launch for more damage. The only problem is that it's minus 13 on block, and I think all of these options can be sized up to some degree. Another less known input is from Freaky Sidestep. The way to do this is reverse core circle forward. So forward, down forward, down, neutral, and then repeat. And from there, all you need to do is hit DF1, and the throw will come out. On stick, this can be tricky, but on pad it's way easier. And the benefit of this is that during that Freaky Sidestep, you're sidestepping, but at some frames you're also crouching. So there's a chance you might go under stuff, such as electrics. And on top of that, you also have access to your sidestep moves, such as sidestep 1 and sidestep 2, and those can stop people ducking. Earlier on in the video, I mentioned Ivory Cutter, so let's talk about that. The command for this is 1 plus 4, and it's a safe 15 frame mid. On hit, you're at plus 4, so again your throw becomes uninterruptible. The move also has decent tracking, so if they try to sidestep, another Ivory Cutter will catch them. The added bonus is that on hit, the opponent is forced into crouch, so it's hard for them to sidestep into the foreground afterwards. And now to the last three setups. First off, we have 1-2 as a 10 frame punisher. This puts you at plus 5, but inputting the throw is a little tricky because you need to hold back and then do it. If you don't do it this way, you'll end up sidestepping right and then getting sidestep 1, which is not what you want. 
As with most of the setups I've mentioned, the cover for duckers and sidesteppers is ivory cutter, and as I've shown in other clips, this will be safe against backdashes. Penultimate setup is back plus 2 2 as a 12 frame punish. This will also put you at plus 5, but what makes it better than 1 2 is that you'll catch backdashes with a throw. In the other setups, backdashes will end up out of range and can whiff punish you, but not here. However, for some reason, Ivory Cutter whiffs against sidestep left. For other setups, this doesn't happen, but here it does, so if anyone knows why, please let me know in the comments. To cover this and duckers, your best option is DF1 plus 2. This is a safe tracking mid that comes out in 16 frames. The only downside is that they end up away from you, so you can't carry on attacking like Ivory Cutter. And now, time for what I think is the best setup, DF34. This is one of her 14 frame punishers and does 30 plus damage. On hit, it's at plus 7 and it has two things that make it stand out. The first is that doing an elbow smash here will track both sidestep left and right. On other setups, this doesn't happen. Sometimes you'll track one way and not the other. Sometimes you won't track at all. But here, it's in both directions, which is a big plus. The second reason is the follow up to DF34 which is 3 plus 4. This is a safe mid and it'll hit sidesteppers and when it does a blonde bomb is guaranteed. That means that if you land the 14 frame punish and the 3 plus 4 you end up doing 79 damage. But that's not all because if you have rage the rage art hits as well and this means that you can do a minimum of 109 damage and if that doesn't make this setup stand out I don't know what will. So before I go into the final clip, I want you guys to tell me what you think is the best setup. Is it DF34 or is it something else? And if you think it's DF34, what do you think is the best of the rest? Let me know in the comments below. And now time for the final clip. For those of you who don't know, Elbow Smash actually breaks the floor of the Forbidden Realm. Which means that when you land it, you can do 86 damage easy with Rage. It's a shame the opponent is back turned, but you gotta take whatever you get. And if anyone knows how to boost the damage, let me know in the comments. As always, I hope you guys learned something. If you did, then please like, share and subscribe. If you think I've missed something out or got something wrong, then say so in the comments. There's more Nina videos to come, so keep your eyes peeled for that and I'll see you guys in the future.